Yes, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, we're going to now kick off this very last session. I very much hope that you can all find a seat so that we can uh, get going again. Thank you very much, uh, Helga, for your session. And we will uh, now move to the short closing part of these research and innovation days. So, as was uh, the construction of the Research and Innovation Days, this is very much about um, member states and uh, European administrations listening to the needs of uh, citizens and key players in Europe. So we want to finish these Research and Innovation Days by listening to our partners, and this will be done by, by listening to, to three representatives, which are very representative because it is, on the one hand, our businesses and industries with Business Europe, our universities with the European University Association, and then our research organization with uh, the European Research and Technology Organization, EARTO. So if, if, I, if you agree, we will kick it off immediately, and I will uh, now welcome uh, Pierre Gattaz, Pierre Gattaz is uh, the president of Business Europe. You're also chairman of Radial, but here you are president of Business Europe. Pierre, welcome. welcome. Over to you. Dear Minister, dear Commissioners, dear Director General, dear researchers, dear innovators, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and great pleasure to attend this closing ceremony. Congratulations for organizing such a meeting and the issue you have discussed, ocean, space, technologies, artificial intelligence, infrastructures, health, cancer, are essential to build the European Union that we all dream of. As an entrepreneur myself and an engineer, I'm always passionate talking about research and innovation. Companies need to constantly innovate in the way we run our businesses to answer to consumer needs and to stay competitive in a global marketplace. Without innovation, no growth, no competitiveness, no well-being for our people, no job creation. It's a absolutely must. Of course, research and innovation is not only an economic opportunity, but also a societal imperative. I usually say that business provides 80% of the solutions to societal needs, thanks to research, thanks to innovation. We need to invent new solutions to tackle big challenges, such as climate change, renewable energies, aging of population, poverty, cancer, health. In a nutshell, research and innovation foster growth and foster well-being and improve the European way of life. My main message tonight is very simple. EU leaders need to prioritize research and innovation in the next MFF. The budget for Horizon Europe will be a clear expression of this ambition. We need at least 120 billion euros for this program, and this is really the minimum. Europe invests around 2% 2 per, 2 of its GDP presently in research and development. This is nothing compared to South Korea, 4.2%, Japan, 3.5%, United States, 2.8%, and China is rapidly catching up. Together with my colleagues from universities and research and technology organizations, who will speak right after me, we speak with one voice, calling on their governments to make sure that Horizon Europe does not become the victim of budgetary trade-offs in the negotiation on MFF. For more than 30 years, the European research programs have demonstrated their added value. Let me highlight very quickly three of them. First, they have helped advance key researchers such as AIDS therapies and make airplanes less fuel intensive, for instance. Second, they play an important role in leveraging private investment that are vital to finance big research projects. According to the last Business Europe survey, nine out of 10 companies 
plan to increase investments in Europe, but count on ambitious public funding for high-risk projects. Third, we need more Europe in research and innovation. Together, we are stronger, and the EU research programs have proven their added value by fostering collaboration. A strong budget for Horizon Europe is therefore crucial to bring together the excellent researchers and innovators we have across all member states. To conclude, ladies and gentlemen, the EU is already the place of excellence and a great assets, asset to be on the winning side in the global innovation race. As Europeans, we managed to do things that would not be possible to achieve alone. Think of space projects such as Ariane or Galileo. Think of Airbus. We need an ambitious budget if we want to turn ambition into reality, and you can count on the support of the EU business community to be ambitious. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Pierre. I can already imagine you at the Elysee making this plea, and all your colleagues uh, across Prime Minister's office. I think this is really where we will make a difference together. Thank you very much. And I now turn to Paul Boyle, Vice Chancellor at Swansea University, but also here today as Vice President of the European University Association. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me along today. Um, I am here, as you've just heard, uh, speaking on behalf of the European University Association, but also 14 other university networks. And we've come together as a group uh, representing over 800 universities in Europe to make a few points here today. I, I should say I've, I've come from the UK today, and I'm fearful of going back tomorrow because goodness knows what will have happened within a day. We, we cannot, uh, we don't know where we're going. <laughs> So I'd like to, in my three minutes, make five very quick points. First of all, it is essential to scale up the ambition of funding exactly as we've just heard. We've made the case, EUA and the 14 university networks, that we should push for 120 billion euros for the next phase of funding. We know that this scaling up is essential for a whole variety of reasons. At the moment, in Europe, we're around about 2% of GB GDP on science. That's well behind many of the competitor nations that we are competing with, so we must do our best to scale up. And this is really vital, uh, I think, for the whole of Europe. Secondly, and you've heard a lot about that in the previous session, it is essential to support curiosity-driven research. The point I would make is it's like infrastructure. It's the equivalent of transport, of roads, of bridges, of airports, Curiosity-driven research is that economic foundation that we require in Europe. And by investing in it, it will serve us in the future much the same way as other traditional types of infrastructure serve us in the future. If we want our economy to, to grow, we must invest in all those types of in infrastructure, including curiosity-driven research. The third point I'll make uh, surrounds, uh, or I would make if I could open my phone, and you'll forgive me for making this point, of course, because I am a social scientist by background. We've heard, I think, during the three days, there have been calls for social science, arts, and humanities to perhaps be taken just a bit more seriously in the planning of the programs that we have in European funding. I think that message has been heard, but it is the truth, I think, to say that every time a framework program comes around, that message seems to need to be repeated. Europe, Europe's economy, is 70% service sector. Half of the researchers in Europe come from the social sciences, arts, and humanities, and much of the work they do can help drive economic growth in the same way as vital work in STEM and other areas also does. Fourth, universities are the beating heart of the knowledge triangle. There are many fine, wonderful institutions that deal with innovation. There are many fine institutions that conduct research. There are many fine institutions that educate. Universities bring those three things together. We are the places where the interactions between those three come together, and as a result of that, we must make sure that universities are at the heart of Horizon Europe as we go forward, as I'm sure they will be. And finally, I'm extremely pleased with the push that our commissioner has given to being open to the world. The United States, for example, I think participated in Horizon 2020 less than 1,500 times. 
around 1% of the participants. In the time of Verizon Europe, American researchers published something like 3.5 million research papers. And of course, we know that the United States has some of the world's very best researchers. We must make sure that Horizon uh, Europe is as open to the world as possible because by bringing the very best minds together, we will end up with the very best science. It's as simple as that. So I just want to finish to say universities across the whole of Europe are fully behind this program of work. We're exceptionally proud of the framework programs, what they've achieved over many, many years now. Universities are proud to have been part of that. And I will finish by saying universities in the UK are exceptionally worried about the, the future. And the reason for that is this program is such a wonderful opportunity for science innovation. We must be a part of it. Thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you very much. And I we now finish with Muriel Atene, Secretary General of EARTO. Muriel. So I have many mics. Yes, they do work. Um, dear ministers, dear commissioner, uh, dear member of the European Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can be very happy collectively of the great success we had of those first RDI days. It's a premiere. I think we enjoyed it. Thank you for the great organization. And I think it showed something very important. I think it showed the commitment of all the stakeholders, and you have heard businesses and university before me, that they were ready to co-design the next framework program. And I think that's also a new step in, uh, in the approach that we should uh, felicitate ourselves also today. If I look at my members, the uh, research and the technology organization, they are quite driver in the European innovation ecosystem. And if I look at their participation in the programs, you know, they are many of the uh, projects which are made with my members. So they are quite great actors of those. And sometimes we have to fight the stereotypes that you know the researchers are grant seekers. If I look at the turnover coming from EU framework program to my RTOs, it's very few. In average, it's less than 10%. 10%, you could tell me if I talk to one of their CEO, uh, well, it's kind of peanuts, something goes to 4%. And I have to tell them, yeah. But you know, those are the strategic peanuts. And it's true. If you're looking at the capacity and the building of um, what we have made in terms of partnerships, we can see that the framework programs have not been a simple set of resources, but they have been really strategic instruments with quite uh, high European added value. And if you look at what the uh, framework program has enabled us to do, uh, we delivered on societal challenge of today. We are thinking of the challenges of the future. We are uh, looking at pan-European strategic collaboration on those challenges. A lot of those challenges will not be answered by national programs only. It is not possible. Um, if you're looking at what the European Framework Program have answered also, um, I think they also help us to have, uh, you know, still a model of economic and social prosperity. Uh, we're not only discussing climate change, which is very high on the agenda this week, but you have heard a colleague of Business Europe mentioning so many. And I think in the Today, um, global context, we have to realize that the technology capabilities that we have set and developed also with this EU framework program are the strengths of our, uh, you know, um, economy in the future. And we're not sure that we're going to be, you know, kept on the global position as we are today. So we need those investments in the future too. Um, if we look at what happens in the past with those framework programs and the plans for the future, we see that they support very strongly technology incentive sectors and also their infrastructure, which are quite key. And you see that with those infrastructure, because they are doing in a pan-European environment, uh, we reduce uh, the risks and the uncertainty which are linked with those investments. And I think in this, we stimulate also private investment in Europe. And I'm very happy to hear the support of Business Europe for such programs. Um, we also seen that those programs, they have helped us to bridge and to develop long-term and trust-based partnerships. Those are indispensable, especially across border. Uh, when you look at pan-European collaboration in the framework programs, you see that those helped also to strengthen our industrial value chains. Uh, and I think when we are trying to link our RDI policy with the future industrial policy, we have to realize that a lot of those partnerships with those key value chains are being set in the framework programs. 
Um, and these are actually the framework programs that sometimes initiated some of the Pan-European collaboration. And with those, we're not going to, you know, um, if those disappear because we have such a limited budget in this next time, I think we should all collectively be worried. So ladies and gentlemen, we are at a decisive moment for the future of Europe. Um, European leaders have to make big decisions on the budget. Um, as my colleague the, asked for it from the European Association of University of the Businesses and many who signed all our declarations for budgets, we need to prioritize RDI in the next MFF. I think it will be a lost spot if we don't do. We all call for a budget of 120 billion euro. This is the bare minimum. Uh, we know that with the discussion in the environment it is difficult, but still we ask you to do. Please, ministers, commissioners, there is a very good principle, the Peter Parker principles, who says, with great powers comes great responsibilities. Well, the job is yours. We need you for the future of RDI policies, and we hope you will take care of us in the next negotiation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Muriel. So we heard uh, businesses, we heard universities, we heard research organizations. So who better to reply on behalf of European administrations than the Deputy Prime Minister of Finland, Minister of Economic Affairs, Madame Katri Kulmuni, Minister. Dear distinguished ministers, dear commissioner, Dear experts, audience, thank you for the event. It's great to be here. It's really my pleasure to have the closing words here at the closing event of the European Research and Innovation Days. I would like to start by thanking the Commission for organizing this great event. I've heard that these three days have been very inspiring and successful, hopefully for all of you too. As the Minister responsible for research and innovation, it has been also very useful to hear the important messages from the stakeholders in person. I would also like to say a few words on the importance of impact and collaboration in research and innovation on behalf of Finland's Presidency of Council of the European Union. Research and innovation are key drivers for sustainable growth. In order to address today's global challenges, we need to maximize the impact of research and innovation. That means we need to collaborate across institutional and geographical borders more than ever. The Finnish presidency believes that the European ambition should be no less than aiming to be the world's most competitive and socially inclusive climate neutral economy. Research and innovation rest at the heart of this ambition. We should also aim at promoting innovation-led transitions with an ambitious policy mix emphasizing increased investments in knowledge, uptake of research results and deployment of innovations. And we also need to encourage joint public and private investments for research, development and innovation. Dear colleagues, dear participants, contribution of all of us is very valuable for shaping the future research and innovation policies and programs for example via these kinds of events. In this spirit, I once again welcome the stakeholder contributions. What we've just heard, the Finnish presidency is committed to advance the work on the Horizon Europe program the EU's main funding instrument for research and innovation as much as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, after the closing remarks, we have a chance to enjoy innovative performance from Finland. And I would like to wish you all an exciting experience with a little surprise. A sound installation that explores human-machine collaboration in vocal music. So thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you. Minister, thank you very much, uh, and thank you very much for your ambition for, for Europe, and as presidency, this is really heartening. And we finish, Elina Galvez, from the European Parliament. Um, you, you, you manage? Yeah, I hope. Yeah, with that, but oh, bravo. So can I help you with the... Can I, I help you? I need to do some research on that, because it happened should I, yesterday. Should I take them? Should I yeah, take them? Sure. I think that will be easier. Yeah, perfect. You? Thank you. So... <laughs> 
So, dear Commissioner Mr. Muedas, uh, dear Deputy Prime Minister, Ms. Kalkumi, dear Director General, Mr. Paquet, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to be here with you this evening and I'm very grateful for the initiative taken by the European Commission to launch research and innovation days. It is indeed crucial to get citizens and stakeholders closer to the European Union decision makers and to get civil society involved in European Union actions. So my sincere congratulations for allowing during three days thousands of researchers and entrepreneurs to meet those who will shape and implement Horizon Europe. And in the margin of it, for allowing the three European Union institutions to meet. We hope that this dialogue will establish itself as a tradition. I'm also very pleased to be with you at this very particular moment in the transition phase toward establishing a new College of Commissioners. This makes it also a very special moment for you, Mr. Moedos, uh, as we are reaching the end of your mandate and on behalf of the ITRA committee, let me uh, sincerely pay tribute to you. Uh, personally, for those restless five years, you spent so much energy, time and efforts at the service of the European science, research and innovation for the benefit of all European citizens. You have tried extremely hard to put research on the European political agenda and to ensure that the contribution of the European Union to scientific success was duly communicated. We hope that the next commission will remember that science, research and innovation are needed to reach fair and sustainable growth and development. Even if I'm a new member of the parliament and as a researcher myself, uh, until very, very recently. Um, a former regional minister of science, research and innovation in Andalusia, I know very well your commitment and I want to thank you very much for that. I believe... <laughs> I believe uh, that we all have one thing in common. We all are convinced here that research and innovation are crucial for European Union's future and that they are crucial if I quote, Europe needs to lead the transition towards a healthy planet and a new digital world as President-elect uh, Ms. von der Leyen puts forward in her agenda. And we hope that we will be just transitions without leaving any person or territory behind. And for that, we really need to invest in, in science and uh, research and innovation. So we are all friends of research and innovation here tonight. Therefore, we are probably convinced that research and innovation need increased resources. As we have already said, all of us that are uh, talking here. Not only innovation, but the whole value chain, starting from basic and frontier research. Because, as you said, uh, Mr. Moedas, five years ago during your hearing in front of the ITRE committee, fundamental research is the stream that leads into the rivers of technology and innovation. So my message is that we'll need to unite our forces in the upcoming budgetary battle and we should do our best as well, not only to increase the budget for Horizon Europe, but also to lead to more investments in research and innovation and in other programs. And it is up to the member states too, to be fully involved since our continent cannot lag behind. When it comes to work closely together between friends research and innovation uh, across European Union's institutions, Commission, the Parliament and the Council, of course, the strategic planning process comes immediately as a priority. In this respect, I can only reiterate the request already expressed by the European Parliament that Horizon Europe, and in particular its missions and partnerships, are being designed in close cooperation with us. We are confident that following the recent exchange of views with Director General Ms. Paquet in ITRE committee, we'll be able to define a way to cooperate on a regular basis. 
May, let me conclude by addressing on behalf of each committee to all of you our very best wishes for a future where research and innovation continue to be key for citizens' well-being, but also and above all, to send my very best wishes to you personally, Senor Moedas. Be assured that with your successor, the ITRA Committee and the European, uh, the European Parliament will continue to push forward research and innovation as a priority for European political action and agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.